Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's January 8th, 2018, 2018 public meeting. Uh, we're going to start with a recognition of service, and I'd like to start just by saying that the town cannot run without its public employees, and the public employees in Hampton do a phenomenal job. So as, as chairman of the board, I would like to thank you for all the years of service, and there are tonight leaving Hampton, there are 279 years of service. And as these people come up here and get their recognition, none of them look old enough to contribute to that. <laughs> so I'd like to open it up, and Rusty, would you like to uh, say something? No, uh, I've worked with most of these people over the years, uh, both police, fire, public works. Uh, and a as the chairman said, this town couldn't run without <coughs> you. And we appreciate all your service you've done, and we appreciate your contribution that you've made to this town. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these uh, young ladies and gentlemen uh, behind us or in front of us uh, need no, uh, no higher praise than uh, the performance of duty that they've executed through a long and tenured hardship. And the jobs that they have performed so well and the leadership that they have executed so brilliantly uh, is under tough conditions, nothing more uh, Nothing more uh, demonstrated than uh, this last storm and how the streets and how the functions of government, when everyone else uh, sought their own shelter, that uh, the folks that are retiring here tonight led and passed the baton and were ambassadors of outstanding stewardship to the high ethics and high work involvement of our public employees. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. What I'd like to do is call each individual up and we'll give them their, this plaque. And what I'll do is I will read the first one and then I won't read every one after that. We'll be here all night. Uh, Town of Hampton, resolution and recognition of service. Whereas Teresa McGinnis, is Teresa here tonight? Oh, not here, okay. Has served the people of Hampton, Town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as the operations coordinator and many other positions in the Public Works Department for 43 years. She has served with distinction, providing guidance and leadership during her tenure as a faithful employee. She has served the town above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often at personal sacrifice. Be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make known their appreciation for services she has rendered to the town of Hampton. We have set our hands and seals this 27th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2017, and of the 379th year of the founding of the town of Hampton, the 338th year of the founding of New Hampshire, and the 241st year of the independence of the United States of America. Signed, James A. Waddell, Chairman, Regina M. Barnes, uh, Vice Chairman, Richard Griffin, Selectman, Rusty T. Bridal, Selectman, Philip W. Bean, Selectman. Uh, so thank you for her service. Absolutely. Next. Mark, no. Looking for the names. Robert DeRocher. Robert here? All right. We'll hold that one off. Keep on going. Keep on going. Toby Eldridge. Toby Eldridge served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a transfer station operator and many other positions in the Public Works Department for 28 years. Hi, Toby. Congratulations. And I've lived in Hampton for 10 years, and I always say that where I used to live, every time I went to the transfer station, they were arguing and yelling at me. And when I came, first came to Hampton, I said, this is the friendliest transfer station I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and they are. Peter McKinnon. Have served the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as the senior animal control officer 
and many other positions in the police department for 16 years. 16. 16. Congratulations. 16 golden years. <laughs> golden for us. Thank you. No. Frank Swift. Frank Swift, Swift has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a general foreman and many other positions in the Department of Public Works hey, for guy. 20 years. Congratulations. Hey, yes. Thank you for your service. <laughs> it felt like 30. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Peter, I think your plaque reads incorrectly, does or did I read it incorrectly? No, it reads incorrectly. Then we'll have it redone. Okay. To have it read correctly. I'm sorry. Another 18 years. Kind of short there. When he, when he said that date, Pete, I'm going, that ain't right. <laughs> William Cronin. William Cronin has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a patrolman and many other positions in the police department for 19 years. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Good man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. William, I spent many a night on Hampton Beach on crazy. <laughs> Mark Richardson. <laughs> Mark Richardson has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty Thank as a transfer Mr. station foreman Thank and many you. other positions in the Department of Public Works for 17 years. Thank Mark. Thank you. Too. Mark, thank, thank you very much. much. Congratulations. Go Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Nasarian. Nassessian. Nassessian. <laughs> Daniel Nassessian has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a communication specialist and many other positions in the department for 17 years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Sir, my brother. God bless you. And you all. God bless you. Thank you. Peace. All right, let me get my wife in here. Hold on a second. Hey. Christopher Gilroy. Nope. Not here. Okay, has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a detective and many other positions in the police department for 16 years. Robert Turcott. Not here. Has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a patrolman and many other positions in the police department for 13 years. We have two of this that I don't think are here. Charles Betcock. Betcock. Not here. Has served the people, uh, the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as the carpenter helper and many other positions in the public works department for 17 years. And Air Mar Anne Mar Marchant has served the people of town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as the legal assistant to Mark. Many other positions in the legal department for four years. That's it. That's it. That's all that we have tonight, and thank you very much for your service. And we all appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Danny. All right. How's that daughter, Frank? Yeah. When you go to the DI, you get another one. You need to have your real name or you just take it. All right. It's empty, right? Yeah. Sir. Okay. Well, we'll get that. Bye, Swifty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. Enjoy. I'll see you at church. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Which church is going to fall down? Uh, Lanio, Desi, 401. Okay, uh, at 7.12, we'll open a public hearing pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14-A, proceedings for 109-111 Kings Highway tax map 197 lot 18. Three provisions of the deed from the town for which relief is requested are in paragraph 4, specifically the one single family dwelling unit with no subdivision restriction and the seven foot setback requirements. There are two dwellings on the lot that have been in existence since 1945 and 1955, respectively, which are proposed to be placed under condominium form, form of ownership and fewer than seven feet from lot lines. This is the first hearing. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this? Seeing none, we'll go to the board. Nothing at this time. Nothing at this time. Negative, sir. Okay. Uh, town manager, do you have anything to say on Nothing, this one? Nothing, sir, until the final one. Okay, so this is the first hearing. Uh, two weeks from now, we will have the second hearing, and we'll go from there. All right. Uh, close that public hearing at 7.13. Open the next public hearing at 7.13. Pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14-A proceedings, for 871 Ocean Boulevard tax map 183 lot 17, remove the single family deed restriction first hearing. Anybody from the public wishing? Well, let's go to you first. We'll go here. Could you introduce yourself, Yes, thank please? you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Attorney Gerald. Uh, Tim Phoenix from Hopeful Phoenix, Gormley and Roberts in Portsmouth. I'm here tonight uh, with and on behalf of Dr. Fred Eric, er Erig, who is uh, my client and a personal friend. Um, Fred bought this property in 2013. Um, the, uh, you can see it, some of the exhibits to my original letter of October 23rd are up here. I do want to make one clarification that the uh, paragraph in the deed of Exhibit 4, we're requesting f um, a change not only from the single family dwelling but also from the limitation of four bedrooms because there are arguably five bedrooms. Um, two on the f on the first floor, the original floor, and three on the second, although one doesn't have a bedroom, so I don't know if it's a bedroom, but to be safe, we'd like uh, that dealt with as well. Um, back in 1985, um, the town deeded this property to the then owner, and right around that time, he was given permission to um, put a second story on it with two bedrooms and a bathroom. Um, at or about that time, we're not sure when, it, it morphed into a second dwelling unit with, with three bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, 
So for about 30 years plus, it's been uh, two families. Um, on the bottom of the top, you can see the, the picture up here, which is part of the exhibits that was attached. Um, as, a, as a sort of a side note, or what we find somewhat important, I've also attached um, an Exhibit 8. I also have an Exhibit 9 here for you all. <coughs> Um, we checked the records of the town Thank you, sir. Um, running from approximately 3rd Street um, up past Fred's uh, home and found 20, at least 20 multifamily, two or more family units along the boulevard. We also looked at the files and some of them had in planning no file. Um, some of them had files. They don't look like they were granted variances. I don't know whether back in the 80s and early 90s, whether two families might have been permitted. We're trying to get a copy of the zoning ordinance from that time. Um, in any event, um, Fred bought it as is. Um, it's been uh, a two family up and down for, as best we can tell, over 30 years. Um, and um, we found, um, Fred was talking to me about it, we looked into it and found the deed restriction um, that says you can only have a single family and you can only have two bedrooms. So um, to do anything with the property legally, we seek to have that uh, restriction waived. Okay. Uh, anybody from the public? Anybody from the public? We, before we go to the board, I just want to say that the, uh, we have a letter from the Conservation Commission uh, saying they have no objections to this uh, proposed amendment. And we have a letter from the Planning Board uh, that has recommendations. Uh, Recommended all proposed amendments to deed restriction number four in accordance with RSA 4114-A process. Yeah, thank so, you, Mr. Chairman. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. I think the planning board took five minutes. The, the Conservation Co Commission took two minutes to right. decide. So we'll go to the board. Russ, do you have anything? No, you're no problem. I know the piece of property well. Yeah, I know the uh, piece of property well, uh, as well, uh, very well. I've never been inside it, but I've run by. It's it's a gorgeous piece of property. I am looking at vision appraisal. I am looking the, at the uh, tax card. I'm looking at the contribution that this young man makes to the town of Hampton, and I support uh, in the broadest and most enthusiastic terms uh, any of their requests. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mark, you I, had I something? I did have a couple of questions to you, Attorney Phoenix. Sure. The, um, Tax, how, how, many, how many years did you say has this been used as a two-family? It's a little bit unclear. If you look at Exhibit 1 to my submission, there's the uh, building permit that was issued. Um, excuse me. Uh, no, Exhibit 2 um, is the building permit that was issued uh, in 84, which was while it was still town-owned property. And that says construct uh, a permit to construct second floor addition for two rooms and a bathroom. And then it goes on to say each bedroom must have at least one emergency yeah, egress window. Uh, about a few months after that, the town deeded the property to then owner Terra Giannis. So it was some time after that. We're not sure exactly when it turned from the approved two bedrooms and a bathroom to uh, what I'll call a living unit. We're estimating it was around that same time, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I think your goal is to have two units. Correct. And they would be, is that looking at a condominium form of Not ownership? at this time. Uh, Fred has, got, to my knowledge, no yeah. present intention to convert it to condos. Okay. Nevertheless, uh, it would be uh, rented out separately. Is that the thought? Correct. Um, this is an unusual unit, as has been noted. It, it is one building, it seems, at this time. And it has an elevator in the back behind the garage up to what is at least when it was built an office, is that right? I don't, it was originally, Fred lives on the second floor. Sure. Um, and the elevator goes up to, to his floor, but it was never just, I mean, when it was originally built, it was apparently two extra bedrooms and a bathroom. I mean, that was what was approved. It morphed into what it is today, and he bought it a few years ago. But what would the two units be? How would they be configured as one, as each unit? One unit, at the bottom floor is, uh, two bedrooms, uh, kitchen, living room. Um, there's also a two-car garage and par car, uh, parking for at least two cars on the driveway outside. The second unit is either two-bedroom or three-bedroom. We've identified it on the plans as three-bedroom. However, one of those has no closet, so whether it would be technically a bedroom or not, I don't know, but I wanted to be conservative about it and just ask for the permission for all five. 
the um, the tax card just simply notes set up like a two family. This is not a legal two family. At least that's what the tax card says. I, and it's not a legal two family because there's a deed restriction that says you can only have a single family. Exactly. Uh, there is a building permit that was issued. Uh, it looks like uh, <coughs> August of '96 that says must become one dwelling unit. I don't know if you noticed that. I, I was not aware of that. Yeah, I can give this to you just so you okay. can see it. Thanks, uh, just for clarification's sake. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. another reason that we need this uh, waiver. Thank you. Sure. That's all the questions I had for you on okay. your Thank presentation. You. Very good. <coughs> all right. So this also is uh, the first hearing. So we will revisit this in two, two weeks. weeks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very time. much. Appreciate it. Now that house was a, a metal house when it was originally built. Is that still part of that inside or is it? It's a <coughs> very confusing inside. In fact, it, when you go up halfway up to the second level, you go into a little opening and there's a roof there that has stones yeah. on the roof. Yeah, the flat roof, the fairly flat. Yeah. No, it's, well, is that, no, it's that, it's I mean, a, well, it's got a pitch, some pitch to it, but it's not. But it, had, it had loose stones on it? Yeah, it had a, a stone, a tar and gravel. That's what they used to do back yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just curious. Okay. I, knew the, I knew the people who owned it way back when. So. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. We'll close the public hearing at 721 and open public hearing. Uh, <coughs> another public hearing at 721. Public hearing pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings. For 1088 Ocean Boulevard tax map 99 lot 11, the only provisions of the deed from the town for which relief is requested are the seven foot restrictions in paragraph four to allow two units, to allow units two, eight, and nine, including their decks and the existing utility panel to remain at their current locations and allow the subdivision of the lot A large house from the end from the end to allow the subdivision of the lot A large house from the remaining land on which units 2 and 9 are located. The unit foundations are 6.42, 6.52, and 5.14 feet distances from the property lines, and in some cases the decks are even closer. Both the units and the decks are shown on the site plan, and lot A is shown on the subdivision plan. There are no neighboring buildings close enough to be affected by this as shown on the plan. The encroachments onto the town property are proposed to be removed. First hearing. And this also, I believe, went before the planning board. Uh, 1088. As of November 5th, meeting with the planning board, reckon, recommended all proceed proposed amendments to deed restriction number four in accordance with RSA 41 colon 14 dash a process. And the conservation committee has no objections. Anybody wishing to speak on this? Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll go to the board. No, at this time. Negative, sir. Okay, and this is the first public hearing. This will be heard again in two weeks, so thank you. Uh, close that public hearing at 723. Public comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to comment? Seeing none. What? Oops. Come right I'm, here. Sorry. Nope, I'm sorry. If you'll uh, identify yourselves, yeah, your address. Sure. You yeah. Okay. Where is it? No, we're good. Um, my name is Megan Riley. This is Lauren Macy, and we appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you guys tonight. We wanted to join the meeting to share that we've submitted a warrant article petition for the construction of a sidewalk on Mace Road connecting Mill and High Street. So Lauren and I both live on streets uh, off of Mace Road, and we feel that a sidewalk would be a great addition to Hampton's active community. Not only will a sidewalk provide an opportunity for children to walk to and from school safely, but also for our runners, our um, people walking dogs, and then also we have a beautiful new playground um, at the end of Mace Road over by Five Corners. And families, myself included, Lauren, uh, don't feel comfortable walking to that playground. People would rather drive there um, or go to a different playground than to actually risk walking 
excuse me, with their, their children in a stroller, a wagon, or even just walking down the street with them because of um, how dangerous it is. People are distracted driving. Um, they're driving too fast, and <clears throat> Lauren and I want to make sure that we uh, are ensuring the safety of not only our children but the, the residents of Hampton. So we understand and we recognize that there's a lot on the ballot this, this uh, year, a lot of big items, um, but we do hope that the, the town of Hampton will support this uh, warrant article petition. And so Lauren and I will be here for the rest of the meeting. So if you guys have any other questions after that, we're, we're happy to, to take them. So thank, thank you. you. Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. I'd just like to thank the first responders for their job for last Thursday night. It was uh, treacherous conditions, and, and they did a wonderful job. Once again, thank you very much. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll go to announcements and community calendar. I'd just like to piggyback on his statement. You know, we had 12 or 13 days of uh, record low temperatures. Our police department, fire department, public <coughs> works have been out there for all those days. Uh, we had a couple of, one really good snowstorm, and that was with some water. And uh, they were out there through it all. And I, I really appreciate our town workers and uh, our town employees. I think they did a, they did a commendable job, and uh, I, I just hope everybody remembers that. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Gary, thanks for coming to every uh, meeting. We appreciate it. Uh, we get lonely here sometimes. <laughs> and, um, my fellow selectmen, thanks for showing up tonight so we got a quorum in. We can conduct some business. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, extrapolating on the excellence that was uh, demonstrated by the municipal platform, the taxpayer's company, uh, the citizen's company in this, uh, this town of Hampton, which was incorporated in 1638. Um, and these men and women did a fabulous job. And just to, again, extrapolate, uh, there'll be some uh, uh, warrants uh, this March, and it'll be about pay raises. And it'll be about many of the men and women that worked 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 hours in a row in hazardous conditions. And uh, the board has voted uh, unanimously for those contracts. Uh, and, and this is an additional uh, endorsement. Uh, and this uh, Mother Nature provided that endorsement, uh, not from any human being. But uh, to take a hard look at those, and uh, I'm not suggesting uh, to tell anyone how to vote, but uh, if you like the performance and you woke up the morning after that storm and your roads were clear and you could get to work, uh, you could get to the hospital, or if you needed emergency transport or shelter, uh, and if the schools were open safe uh, on that Monday morning uh, and your buildings were all, s all squared away and you were safe, uh, think strongly about pay raises for those that provided those services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I also would like to thank the police department, the fire department, and the DPW for the excellent work they did. And I think an important thing about the DPW to remember is that these guys are out plowing all night. Then they come in and do their day job. And then they got to pick up the trash and pick up the recycling and everything. And they did a phenomenal job of trying to get everything on schedule, get it working properly. So thank you very much to all of them. Consent agenda. Notice of intent to cut tax wood tax map 148 lot 8 McCarran Drive. Termination of lease for seawalls, revetment or stairs 52 and 54 Glade Path. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Representative Tracy Emmerich. Welcome. Bills for the 2018 legislative session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I updated a memo that I provided the board last week. Uh, the schedule just went up, up live today, so I do have some dates and times for some of these hearings. Uh, the reason I'm here is uh, all four of these bills pertain to Hampton in some way. Uh, I met with some citizens, and, and that's what helped generate the bills. What I'm looking for is support from townsfolk or yourselves at the hearings. Uh, citizens showing up to hearings make a big difference on bills. <coughs> you know, when the when the legislator is, sponsors a bill and they're the only speaker, it doesn't have a lot of heft to it. So if we could, if, if, if anybody would like to talk about it after this meeting, 
Uh, these are coming up fairly rapidly, and I'll go through these quickly so you'll know what the, what the content of the bills are. Uh, HB 1491 is uh, Senator Stiles' bill uh, that didn't make it out of the Senate last term. This is where a portion of the, the room and meals tax is returned in proportion to where it comes from. Uh, as part of the memo that I provided, I also provided the uh, Department of Revenue Administration uh, revenues by town uh, in the year 2015. That's the latest version I could find. In that, you'll see that Hampton contributes approximately 2.5% of room and meals tax in the state. So that should this bill pass, and it's, it's a fairly convoluted bill, but it, it would allow for up to $5 million to be returned to cities and towns where room and meals tax come from. Uh, to Hampton, that would represent approximately $125,000. So I, I, I want to set expectations where they are, not thinking if we get some money back and room and meals, we're going to be rolling in dough. Uh, but it's, it's $125,000 we wouldn't have had otherwise, so I'm not – I'm not poo-pooing, I'm just saying I just want to set the expectations that this is not going to be a, a budget changer. Uh, I do plan to go forward with it. You'll see this goes before Ways and Means uh, on January 18th at 1.30. Uh, so if anybody has a strong opinion or uh, one way or the other, uh, it would be a good time to uh, be heard. And if you have any questions on this one, then I'll move on to the next one. Any? Uh, just, just on this, this yes. is a, a great chart that you provided. I see that in Representative Barnes, I mean, sorry, Selectman Barnes asked me if I could ask you. Okay. Uh, this, ch we, we've not been able so far to get a DRA to say, because they claim they didn't keep the uh, statistics to say it, uh, what the income was from by town. Right. But apparently for this one year they did. Well, uh, actually I was working with Senator Stiles on, 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 in the off season, so to speak, in the fall, and I challenged the DRA to show me where does it say you can't publish these numbers, and they couldn't. There's nowhere in the RSAs that say you can't publish this. What we did agree on is that, like the IRS, any town that has less than ten licenses, they would not publish. I said, fine, I'm not worried about ten licenses. So that that's when we got that full report. They do have the data. I mean, it, it's there. You'll notice in the footnotes, they very cleverly say, which is true, sometimes if you have a multiple owner, say they have five Dunkin' Donuts, they report from headquarters. So you're not getting the actual data from the other four locations or maybe the five locations are not where the headquarters is. This, in 1491, it would be reported out as location by zip code, not reporting headquarters. They can do it. it. You know, it's not that hard. It's just it's easier to say no than it is to say yes. Uh, so that, that's what 1491 is all about. And they can do it. Uh, their, their mantra right now is we only summarize at the, at the county level. What good does that do? I mean, for anybody. Uh, so they, they have the data. Correct. I, I see that uh, this was for the 2015 year, but in the in the bottom right hand corner it says 14, prepared uh, yeah. by at New Hampshire DRA on 10 7 2014 it, it was it was in 15 i think they probably had a document that had a date on it and they just updated it i mean that's uh in it, this uh this chart was uh generated through your your good efforts to to get that done and Nancy as well yes I, I suspect that if they, uh, a similar request were made by your office, uh, they would probably have to respond to that, wouldn't they? I, I can try. I mean, they, they would probably be inclined to just give me what Hamptons is, not the, not the whole state. Sure. But I mean, if we if we want to update that, I can I can talk to the DRA and that I got it from and say, can you give me an update? Selectman uh, Barnes specifically asked me to ask you that. Okay. Well, I, I, my, my, get, my guess is we're still approximately 2.5%. I mean, I'm, you know, the state has grown a little bit, but not disproportionately anywhere. So I think we're probably still around 2.5% of the total. Sure. Would be a uh, guess. And, and nevertheless, uh, our distribution is based on our year-round population of 15,000. Yes. Rather than our uh, contributing population. Correct. 
Okay, let's go to Rusty. No, I haven't got anything on this one. I think uh, you're doing a great job getting the information out of me. You did a better job than I could have. <laughs> Thank you. Go to Phil. Thank you. Uh, uh, everybody knows the deal with the state. Jim's been up there. Everyone's been up there. You put both doors in the water. And um, uh, I'll come back to you on another bill that Randy Cushing asked me to ask you about tonight. Um, it's coming up tomorrow. But uh, the bottom line is $200 million bucks of juice goes from the revenue camps in Hampton, and it goes to Concord. And uh, dealing with all the other people up there, you know how difficult it is. How many times have you been up there? What, to Concord? Yeah. 200 and 300, something like that. Two or 300 years? Yeah. So, well, how, um, many years? how many trips? How, no, how, many, how many terms? Oh, that's my third term. Third term. And it, and, it, and it takes a collective effort. And they're starting to get the message. And uh, you do a great job up there. And you're a gentleman. And you work uh, on the, in the deep end of the pool on finance. And it, it is difficult to get the information. And it speaks to the, uh, the notion that if you have three terms up there and you're elected by the citizens of Hampton, that you can't get a simple dashboard of data for a tax input from this town in 2000, now 18. It's, it's almost criminal. And uh, I'll, I'll get with you offline, and we'll continue the fight up there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, and right now, the DRA has a, a temporary commissioner. Uh, the commissioner left and went to work for Fidelity. So uh, we'll have to see who the new commissioner is going to be. Maybe we can do a little more strong arm. Yeah, and just an aside, uh, you know, the, the folks that have uh, accounts at Fidelity, when they want information, they get it. When uh, the board of directors wants information, they get it. But somehow, if you're a citizen uh, in the state of New Hampshire, uh, you don't get it. So explain that to me. Thank you. Yeah, Tracy, I just want to say that the one thing you said is really important, that people come up and support it, mm -hmm. because it does no good for just the rep to be there. It needs citizens there. It needs elected officials from the town there to sit in also on, on the, uh, the hearings, especially the hearings, because so much work gets done at the hearings. Right. And you know, I've done a lot of uh, research on other towns' budgets and taxes and stuff like that in other cities around the country. And most places that have a resort town, like Hampton or like some of the other towns in New Hampshire, they do a point of sale. So they know where that tax is coming <coughs> from. And then they split that. There's this couple that do it 50-50. So they go point of sale, and 50% goes to the state, 50% goes to the town. Right. And then it, that makes more sense than basing it on population, because population is not giving you the 150,000 that we might have here during the summertime. Right. So it's very important. So it's important. It just I stress what Tracy said. Please, if anybody's interested in this bill, go to Concord. You can sit in on all the hearings. It's interesting to go and see what's going on. You can put a little piece of paper in there, and you can uh, ask to testify also. And, and, and Ways and Means is one of the larger committees. <coughs> they have like 26 members, so it's, it, it, it's pretty much a free-for-all. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What else do you uh, House Bill 1248 uh, establishes a study committee uh, as far as construction of a parking facility in Hampton Beach. Um, a uh, study committee is really that. I mean, this this is not a, a legislation to create an RSA. It's the legislation to say we're going to have a study committee. And all that does is you keep minutes, and it can move into be legislation next term. Uh, so this one is not as essential, but it would be nice if somebody could come along. That, this one happens to be on Thursday at, uh, one, uh, at 11 a.m., and that's in 201 of the Legislative Office building. So if anybody, and I, I am going to talk to the citizens who worked with me on this to see if some of them will show up. Uh, but it, like this one, if we had two or three people show up and say, yeah, it's very important to Hampton, it'd be done because study committees don't take a, you know, all that much job Um So that's... Uh, Rusty, do you, any questions on this? Also. Negative, sir. Thank you. Town manager? We can give you a copy of the prior legislative study on this. It was a legislative study that recommended the construction of a parking garage in Hampton Beach. I, well, I'd love to get a copy of it. <laughs> we could do that. That would be helpful. That's yeah. a nice place to start. Now the question is, where do we put it? Well, that's always <laughs> a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> you could hang it from skyhooks. It would be great. Uh, House Bill uh, 1619. Uh, currently, there is a, uh, it's called the Community Re Re Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive, and it allows uh, Boards of Selectmen to provide tax relief. Uh, right now, it only covers two types of uh, uh, properties. It covers land and existing industrial buildings. What this what this does is it adds hotels, 
because we have a couple of hotels that are falling into disrepair and this would allow a buyer to come before the Board of Selectmen and say, look, I really want to buy this, but I'd like some relief on taxes during construction or whatever they ask for. Uh, but right now they can't do it because everything's forbidden until permitted. So we have to add yep. hotels to the list of property types. And that's what this is all about. Rusty? Also. Bill? No comment. Okay. <laughs> would, would one feature of this uh, bill be that like prior uh, provisions under the RSA that uh, it would be something that would have to be adopted locally? Yes. Yeah, this is local local rule, absolutely. So it would basically be enab enabling legislation. Right. Well, it is as it stands because it's up to the Board of Selectmen to uh, grant. Right. All right. But what, what, what happened the last time when we, uh, when uh, Senator Stiles uh, assisted in pushing through legislation to enable the burned out buildings that no longer exist to allow the credit to be applied to those, it first had to be adopted locally before it could be uh, implemented. Oh, okay. Is okay. That, if, I wondered if that were a feature, but we can talk about I that haven't, later. Uh, I haven't read all of 79E, quite honestly. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> House Bill 1620 uh, had to do, has to do with uh, property and casualty insurance. Uh, presently, uh, businesses in Hampton, and I'm assuming other parts of the state, that are considered high risk are unable to secure uh, U.S. insurers. A lot of them are uh, well, standard insurers, like like a farmers, and Phil knows a lot more about this than I do. Uh, but they they don't have a high risk option in a lot of the relationships they have. So they go to what, what are called I got to look it up uh, surplus insurers, like Lloyd's of London, in order to buy uh, property and casualty. A lot of it has to do. We think it has to do with flooding, but a lot of it's about wind. Uh, so all I'm doing here is saying, why don't we let, and I, I don't know if I'm really overly enthusiastic about this because now the government's intervening in commercial <coughs> enterprise, which I phil philosophically don't like. Uh, but in this particular case, the businesses are suffering because the philoso philosophy of, you know, uh, ca caveat emptor, you know, let them do what they want to do. Uh, what I'm saying is 2% of high risk of the portfolio of insurers, commercial insurers in the state of New Hampshire be high risk. The total of high risk insurance issued in the state of New Hampshire is approximately 3.8% of all insurance uh, business, property and casualty that's issued. So I took the 3.8 and I said, well, let's make it two. You know, the, the problem inherent in this, and, I'm, and I've already started arguing with myself about it, <laughs> is that if you say you've got to have 2%, that means that an insurer can say, well, it's going to have to be this cost this much, which would be more than they could get it from somewhere else. And, but they'd still have to do something to get that 2%. So we're forcing somebody to do business. And I don't have to, there might be a downside of this that I don't see. So that this one is probably going to have a pretty good uh, uh, representation from the insurance industry, I would imagine. Uh, so if somebody has other thoughts on this, I'd appreciate it. This could be a, uh, I'll call it a placeholder uh, filing uh, that could morph into something else. But I, I really think the insurers should be encouraged to do business with uh, New Hampshire. Yeah, let's business. go to Phil first. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, um, and I'm going to add to your own uh, uh, self-imposed dilemma on this, um, <laughs> Representative, is uh, uh, some of the biggest fires down at the beach in the last 20 years have been paid off with uh, surplus lines paper. And Lloyd's of London has been around since far, far longer than any domestic carrier because uh, they're from England and uh, we ran the Indians um, off of the land here 200, 300 years ago. So it's great paper and there are great rates and there can be great coverages. Uh, the second thing is you're absolutely right about government intervention into the marketplace. No further example than what's going on under um, federal takeover and mandates with health insurance where now uh, small business employees and employers are paying mortgage-sized payments for health insurance. And that's since the government <coughs> intervention, the dramatic intervention um, four or five years ago under the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act. 
Medicare is a hundred trillion dollars out of whack. That's another government program. Hundred trillion dollars out of whack. That's what happens when the government gets involved. Social Security. These young ladies that are looking for a sidewalk will never get the Social Security benefits that we enjoy. It is generational warfare. They're taking 15 points from their paycheck. They're giving it to people that are soon to be my age or a little older, and uh, some other people in this room, that age group. Uh, the Medicaid expansion that was legislated last year has been a pandemic failure in the state. People are walking around that are able-bodied, that do not have a work requirement, that have Ferraris for plans, while if you work every day, uh, have a payroll, pay taxes, uh, you're paying $2,500, $3,000 a month for a plan. Um, flood insurance is $25 billion out of whack. Uh, that is simply printed paper by the government, government intervention, where many people, <clears throat> some of them are in this neighborhood down here, that we saw people in tonight, they don't live on Mace Road, they're living oceanfront, and they're in a government program that is $25 billion out of whack. And the notion that, um, uh, and I'm just adding to your doubt, that it might be a placeholder and pulled back, is that uh, there is a very little record where the government is involved in uh, the risk management yeah. business, where it stands the test of time, where it's actuarially sound, and if imposed, that government just does not transfer those fungible expenses over to other ratepayers. So again, like the flood insurance, um, uh, middle class people are paying for more affluent people that perhaps li choose to live at the ocean. Whereas if you live up in the west side, you don't pay it. End of story, thank you. Well, the good news is uh, this bill is not scheduled yet. And up until the, the bill is, uh, has its hearing, it can be withdrawn. So if I hear, and I'm, I'll follow up with Phil, but I, th this one's, kind of on the fence for me. I did it on behalf of some citizens that are, you know, one of the U.S. carriers, but I'm, well, I can, I can say I'm kind of ha having trouble with myself on this one. Okay. Yeah. I, I would sort of wonder whether or not there's enough, uh, there, there are en enough insurers to, to go around the, for, so that each could have 2%. That's my, that's my concern is yeah. Yeah. how do you, how do you allocate? Yeah. If somebody comes in and t insures them all, then the other companies can't even get any. Right, exactly. So then we've got a gatekeeper again, and what that means for the state is more employees, and that's not a good idea. And, and just to follow on work, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, please, it, it's kind of what we do here uh, at the Bean family, but I was just out of Tahoe, and because of the forest fires out on the farther western coast and along Tahoe, they've done the, done the math, they've done the study, they've uh, looked at the metrics, and every single carrier pulled out of the market, and thank God for these surplus carriers because they're profitable. Um, they've been in, in business for um, 500 years, uh, 400 years, Royal, um, the um, uh, Lloyds, and they're great syndicates. They pay off, and uh, uh, Warren Buffett is a big part of this exposure with reinsurance, and uh, they pay up. And there was just uh, a fire down the beach mo this past uh, l late winter, uh, and it was uh, substantial, and that was excess, and uh, it was paid off. And, um, uh, but at Tahoe, all of these standard market carriers were pull immediately pulling out Hartford, Liberty Mutual, and thank God for these surplus carriers. And it's great coverage, and many times it's just, com it's just as competitive. Okay, good to know. Tracy, uh, yes, Representative, I'd like to thank you for everything you do up in Concord. I'd like to just let the people know again, it, it's people that go to Concord, it's, New Hampshire has citizen legislators. They're not full-time people. They get paid a whole hundred dollars a year hundred dollars a year and select the dean is a representative yeah, before, tax. before taxes <laughs> and representative uh, emmerich is one and, and the others in in hampton they do a job for the citizens unlike a lot of the other states so thank you very yeah. much for what you do mr chairman can i just do one more and it's sure. it's, it's almost like a legislative review uh, mr christian has asked 413 is coming up 413 is the state pension out of our audited statement, and it doesn't require any response, Tracy, I'm just kind of grabbing the, the, the bully pulpit here, but 413 is asking that the state um, basically come back into the ball game because they pulled the rug out from everybody um, on pension contributions. And I'm looking at page nine of our audited report. $6.6 .6 million uh, went out the door related to pensions, deferred outflows of resources. It's uh, um, a deferred outflow, outflow, and it's got to be it's got to be captured that expense, and it's a huge expense to this town, and uh, we're fighting that battle. We've got the torque going on with the state. The fiscal notes say 40 million, this, that, and the other thing, but um, these folks are enforcing state state code. They're enforcing state law. They're enforcing f uh, f state fire law, uh, and uh, they're, they're doing all this job. And uh, Randy Cushing, uh, Representative Cushing, is uh, wanted me to. Uh, 
and bring that up tonight. I, and I'm not asking for your opinion, but um, wanted to alert the public that at least portions of the delegation are engaged in that debate. And I, I, and I must say uh, in Concord that you and Rainey and uh, the skipper, uh, the captain, uh, uh, performed so well and are so highly respected up there, and you've been great mentors, and I thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's just one other thing that people can go online to nh.gov. Right. They can go to the legislative section, and they can get the, the all of the uh, schedule for all of the calendar, for all the bills, for all the hearings, for everything that's coming up that's going to uh, affect Hampton or anything else. And please, people should do that and pay attention. So it's nh.gov legislative section and everything is there okay i can respond to the uh hb 1413 because uh, i'm i'm involved in the floor fight on that one on the other side uh <laughs> as a representative from finance before my time apparently the state contributed 35 percent right uh there was a period of, then we're going to drop to 25 percent the, the drop from 35 percent to 25 percent made the state's contribution go from 40 million to 60 million. They went down 10 percent, but the salaries had had risen so much that it was going to cost 20 million dollars more. And again, I'm all I'm doing is parroting what I've been told because I wasn't around. This felt, started falling into the category of uncontrollable expense because if it went from 40. At 40 million at 35 percent, down to 25 percent, jumping to 60 million. Uh, then it went down to 15 percent, and I don't know what the last round was. I, I don't know when it when they actually quit because it, I think it hasn't been paid uh, since I've been in Concord. I don't I don't remember. It was around two, 2010 or 11 or something like that. Uh, and this comes up every budget cycle, and it has the same discussion every budget cycle. We can't budget it because we don't know what towns are going to pay their employees. So it's it, it, what number you put in there is it's like a guess, and that's the general tenor uh, in finance: is how do we budget something we don't know what what it's going to be? So I'm just yeah yeah just hurting. We won't go into it because this could get into a huge a discussion. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get hot here. <laughs> this is where we go. <laughs> they can figure it out. All right. So thank you. <laughs> Just like the DRA, you know. <laughs> thank you, Tracy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anthony Curo, Earth and Stone Contracting, LLC, permission to use Place Cove parking lot. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thanks. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Anthony Curo. Um, Earth and Stone Contracting. I've been a resident of Hampton for the last 14 years. This will be my like sixth or seventh seawall I've done in the last 14 years. The last one I did on Place Cove, like where I accessed that Place Cove parking area, was probably like four years ago. And um, at that time, we used the parking lot as a staging area, and then we just accessed that went down that road and took a left right at the beach access. But at that time, there was there's a proper wall there now. There was, prior to that, there was like a ramp. So I'd like to utilize that um, access again, move those rocks, and then use the parking area as an access. Put some big rocks in there with a load to carry the rocks down to the beach. And then I like to keep my machine like in the access area instead of every night bringing it all the way back into the parking lot, which is what they wanted me to do like four years ago. And it's just like, it shreds the parking lot. It's just a, it's a nightmare. It's the worst part of the whole job. So I noticed the last two contractors that were doing seawalls, they got to keep their equipment like right at the access. And it was fine. I mean, they didn't... I just think it does more damage if you do that 90 degree down that paved parking lot, I mean, paved road into the parking lot. It's a lot of work. Manager? It is a lot of work, and we don't want you on the road. <laughs> right. <laughs> not, if we, not if we can help that, because yeah. that just makes a big expense for you and for us. Right. Yeah. As long as 
one of the biggest problems we've had with that particular area to, for people to come in and, and store material, you're not one of them, but one of the biggest problems we've had is they come in, they, they pile a tremendous amount of material in there. Right. And then they try to truck it out with a loader over that roadway. And that's difficult because that'll tear the road up something too. Well, you know how bad it can be. Right. You've got you to treat that very gently. So uh, we have public works department work with whoever's going to be there. Uh, we have you sign certificates and get insurance and so on and so forth, the normal procedure. Right. And if the board approves it, we'll go through that procedure with you and get it done and you can get the work done. Good. And Rusty? And and my Rusty? I've got no problem as long as the area is retained to what it was when it, before you got there. Right. Um, you know, you, you need to get down on the beach. You need to help protect those houses there, but we also have to make sure that when it's left, it's left in the same condition it was. Right. Bill? Good to go, sir. Thank you. Mark? Right. As, as uh, Selectman Bridal said, one of the conditions that we always impose is the restoration of the disturbed area to the condition it was in before. And like the manager says, the uh, retention of liability insurance naming the town as an additional insured, which I'm sure you had before. Yeah. Um, do you want to? Do you need a bond for that? Or in we have been taking uh, an insurance bond. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> but the other thing you need is a state permit. We know you. We already that. have. Yeah, we have all that. You won't yeah. be able to start without that. So. Right. Uh, I guess the suggestion I have is come in, come in the office. We'll work this out with you. Uh, so that the public works can can give you the, the the value of the insurance policy you need to have. Yeah. Uh, and, and that'll be the bond in your insurance policy. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I do have. Yeah, you do. Uh, One more I, do have, question. Oh. I have another question off the topic. Is it too late to is it too late to do a warrant article on um, banning smoking in the town beach? Like we talked about it a few weeks back. Five o'clock tomorrow night. Five o'clock tomorrow night. You have to have signatures. I, I mean, I'll have it in, but is it something that? Oh, you can do it. Excuse me. Put it in. You can well, do it. All right. It has to be in tomorrow night by five o'clock, and you need 20, 25, 25, 25 legal registered voters. Get, get thirty-five or forty, because people will always sign it when you ask, but they may, may not be registered voters. All right. So there's a chance. Yep. Yep. Sure. Sure. So it's tomorrow, just go to a meeting tomorrow, or just drop it off at five. The office. Five. The office by five o'clock. I'll be there by five. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Wait. So we need a vote on his. Yes, you do. Oh. I'll yep. make a motion that we uh, allow him to Move use the request. The, his request for the party. Second. Call. All in favor? Good to go. Thank you. Next, Brian McCain, Cable Advisory Board. And if you introduce yourself and a new member. I'm Brian McCain, Chairman of the Cable, Cable Advisory Board. This is uh, Rick Cantor. He's our new media coordinator. Rick's got 40 years in television, and it's, uh, he's a great asset. Uh, we're coming in today uh, to request some monies for uh, replacing some equipment. The first is a wireless intercom system. The one we have now is 15-plus years old. It's out of service life. They can no, no longer fix it, and it's it's failed. We we two years ago we had a couple of headsets and belt packs fixed, and at that time they said they could no longer service it. And now two other ones have failed, so we need to replace the unit. Uh, the lowest bid on that, I, I you have, I gave you some pamphlets on it. Uh, it does. There is four headsets. It's a set or a system. And we're also requesting one extra headset. Uh, the lowest bid was ninety-one sixty-six, ninety-one hundred dollars uh, sixty-six um, from G and G Video. The next is a is a new console for the uh, control room. This will um, replace what we have now, which is basically an editing station that we got we had donated to us. And uh, the problem with it, it's narrow, and everything is stacked up almost six feet high, and we have equipment upon equipment. And when we um, hopefully get our new equipment, this will fit right in. It's, uh, it, all the cables can be run in the front. It has its own power uh, sources, uh, so you can switch everything on from uh, this console and not 
every place like we do now. And everything will be in here. We won't have any racks. It'll be all in the front. Everything will be at eye level instead of the guys looking up like this. Uh, we had we had four quotes on that. We had four quotes on the other one too. Uh, the chief, or the most inex inexpensive, was Little Bay Broadcast Systems out of Dover at twelve thousand twenty-five dollars. This this console, we we view this console as the start of the transition to upgrading the system um, and is partially a result of um, a requirement in the new system to provide an additional rack at the fire station. Um, presently, I guess there's two racks over there um, in that closet washroom, whatever you want to call it, that that, that, that equipment lives in. Um, one of them is the town fire station radios. Uh, the other one is shared by the IT department and uh, Channel 22. And Channel 13, um, yeah. And what else? Channel 13. And Channel 13. Yeah. Um, it, it pretty much both racks are full. Um, so, uh, one of the, again, one of those requirements as we've been looking at um, the upgrades um, and uh, what needs to be fixed here um, was to add that rack. Um, it dawned on us that instead of purchasing a brand new rack for over there, that uh, because of the situation with the console here and the rack beside it, uh, we could repurpose that rack over to the fire station, replace uh, ergonomically something that will make it much easier for the, the operator to to do these kind of shows. Um, so that was a primary driver, for me at least, behind doing that. Anything else? Or do you want to, do you want to guys want to? I figured you do those purchases, the other ones. Purchases. Yeah, and then we have some other. Rusty. No, I think, um, you know, these guys work tirelessly um, for very little money. They, they do a great job. They've kept this system up and going for 25 years. Oh, wow, yeah, well, 14 and days. And it's time that we, we start coming into the 21st yeah. century and, and have some equipment that we need to use it. We have the money to do it. That's why people pay that. That charge on their on their cable bill, and people want they want to have good TV, and these guys have been doing the best they can, but they need some more help, and uh, I I'm totally for giving them that help. Bill, yeah, Rusty Rusty makes good comments. Thank you. It's a little bit um, out of my wheelbox when you talk tech, but I know that uh, the product needs improvement, and I know that you need the equipment for it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, the headsets, mm -hmm. the wireless. You use those when. We use them at uh, anything outside of here. Anything that we use multiple cameras, is, we'll be using them at the uh, budget uh, deliberative session. We'll be using it at the main deliberative session. We use them at football games, basketball games, uh, down at the seashell. Any place that we have multiple cameras and we have to speak to them. So, so you really use them? We on, do them all, on, yeah. On times when people really want to see it and want it to be good, like the deliberative session. Right, right. You well, it's, the, it's to, to communicate be, with the... Uh, yeah. The, yeah, the camera it's, crew. It's so it's internal so we can communications crucial. between the crew. Right. Yeah. It is crucial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, other than that, you just everybody's yeah. going everywhere. So right. I agree 100. percent And I would just like to say that Brian has done a phenomenal job as Absolutely. chairman, and run his own business down here in town, rent all, and get up here and run up back and forth all the time. So I want to commend him for all the work that he's done mm -hmm. and the work that he's done to bring somebody in, and to upgrade our system. So thank you, Brian. Uh, can I have a? I'll make a motion that we. Allow him to purchase the two pieces of equipment that he's asked for for a total of. Yeah, I should have had that for you. Mm -hmm. My bad. I figured you would. Maybe I complimented him too early. Yeah, yeah, you did. You screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> you trusted me. Um, let's see. Looking at uh, 21, 20, 22. Yeah, let's do this. Right <coughs> While they come up with this figure, I think uh, 
you know, a, as you said, uh, you know, they've done a heck of a job keeping this thing going for all, all the years they have. Uh, uh, they can use the equipment. They, they need it. And so it's 21-191. All right, I'll make that motion for 21-191 for the two pieces of equipment that they've, they've requested. And that was done with four quotes from... Four quotes so you met, met the bid, bid policy, and uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's coming out of where? That comes out of the fund for the cable fund. Yeah, the cable fund. So yeah. that's part of the motion. So there's a, a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Next is an upgrade to the uh, the uptown fire departments. The room we share with the fire department, they let us use. Uh, we were just talking about that with the racks. Uh, right now, we're 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 all on one circuit, and we're draining, the, we're draining their we're 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 influencing their communication systems with all the power we draw, and uh, causing problems for them. So we need to upgrade it. We need to have our own circuit up there, and this is coming from the chief and and Paul Paquette. Um, and to do that, we've we've put out. Uh, request to multiple electricians. We only got one back from Parsons in, in town here. Uh, it's to install a 60 amp sub feed from the, their electrical room up to the server room uh, where the channels are. Uh, install eight circuit panel, add two 30 amp circuits for, for the towers and a 20 amp circuit for general use. Uh, and their quote was uh, $2,145. It is. For the work they have to do, they have to go through all those concrete walls, yeah. I'll make a motion that we do for the $2,145. $145. Do we have to uh, say we're waiving the bid process? You don't have to. This is less than $15,000. There we go. All right. So I'll make the motion for $2,100. That comes out of the cable fund, too? Comes out of the cable fund. Yeah, okay. okay. we, ha we, we have that uh, 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 numeric value for the dollar figure, and as such, I second that. Okay, uh, you're not mining bitcoins. You don't need all that power to mine bitcoins, do you? <laughs> <laughs> bitcoins, I don't even know what those are. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed. And uh, the last thing is just uh, I'm going to have uh, Rick give you a little update on the, on his uh, bid proposal he's putting together, which he's very close to having done, so we can get that out. Um, I had quite honestly I hoped that I would um, have be further a little further along um, by this time of, of, the, of the season. Um, I was doing this work um, starting in, I think, around July, um, August of last year as a volunteer, um, two, three, four hours a week when my wife would let me out of the house. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, things come up and but what we have managed to do so far is we've collected all the, pretty much all the requirements. I think we have understand now exactly what uh, the equipment not only needs to be for this area, but also for uh, the remote locations that um, uh, exist, uh, the set locations and the temporary locations like uh, the uh, middle school uh, <coughs> public hearing on uh, Thursday night, um, the, the equipment that needs to be captured for that. Um, the bid is, at this point, um, has come out with, I've come out with four options. Um, we're about 80% written um, with the write-up. Um, all the drawings are complete um, to that, and uh, the Excel sheets that kind of support the, that document. Uh, my expectation at this point would be that um, Brian will be reviewing it next week. We'll be taking it to procurement right um, after that. Um, and then uh, we'll be going out. I have a list, list of 10 vendors, 11 vendors. I can't remember which now. I keep adding to it um, as I find them. Um, we'll be sending it to those vendors. And then probably about a three-week to four-week turnaround. Um, for them to design and uh, make their recommendations on what they would per perceive. Um, for me, to be quite honest with you, the, one of the harder things about this has been to dumb it down so I'm not saying 
buy this. Because I've really got to say, you know, buy sort of that. Um, that's how that works. Um, so uh, I believe we're going to make the March time period to have the, the funds um, in the TV fund obligated um, and be back to you by then. Um, so. Okay, very good. Rusty, you got anything? No. Oh, Phil, anything? Excellent. Negative. Thank you very much. Just what I would recommend is when you get all that put together and stuff, if you can put a package together and get it to the selectmen a couple of weeks yes. prior to coming in for so the meeting so everybody it. can look it over oh, and get a good idea of what's going yeah, on. It's 10, 12 pages at this point. Yeah, okay. So, and that's just the requirements section. I don't know what's going to be added upstairs to it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you thank guys you. are doing. Super. Uh, approval of minutes, December 11th, 2017. I, I believe that's the one I was. I know it is. That the one I was absent from. So do we have enough people to vote on that? Well, if you have a you have quorum, so yeah. okay. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Two. One abstention. One abstention. And vote on the minutes of December 18th, 2017. I'll make a motion. We. Up the minutes. Second. All in favor? Super. Uh, right. Town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the Department of Public Works started a Christmas tree pickup today, January 8th, 2018. The State Department of Transportation has announced that the Hampton Harbor Bridge is anticipated to be closed from February 20th to March 20th for the replacement of a coupler lift used to lift the bridge for boat traffic. The bridge will be open to vehicular traffic during this period of closure. Tomorrow, uh, January 9th, 2018, is the last day to present a petition warrant article to the selection for the 2018 annual town meeting. The bond hearing for the improvements to the wastewater treatment plant will be held in the selectman's meeting room, that's this room, at the town offices on January 16th, 2018 at 6 p.m. The budget committee annual hearing on town and school budgets and warrant articles will be held on January 11th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Hampton Academy. Snow date, hopefully we don't use it, is January 16th. The deliberative session of the annual town meeting will be held on February 3rd, 2018, starting at 8.30 a.m. in the auditorium at the Winniconnet High School. That's it, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bryan. All set. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Uh, I have a question. Sir. On the bridge. They, they've been in contact with uh, commercial fishermen and all that. That's the, the dates actually came from their meeting with the, uh, the different groups down there. That's the best period of time for them to do the work. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. One, one follow on, Mr. Um, yep. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Welsh, these, uh, these women that spoke at public comment, uh, or, or is there going to be something coming up in the agenda? Is there something they should stay for? Later on, uh, you have the warrant out of consider just a few minutes. Okay, wonderful. Just wondering if that was going to be a, a point of discussion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Anything else? Nothing else, sir. Okay, let's move on. Old business. Two hundred, uh, two thousand eighteen <laughs> warrant articles. <laughs> I hope they're not two hundred. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand eighteen <laughs> warrant articles. There you go. Mr. Chairman, you have a number of warrant articles that uh, have been petitioned to the selectmen. Um, and uh, the order in which they're placed in the warrant at this point, this is the order in which they were received, which has been the, uh, the habit for folks to do uh, by order of the board in the previous year, so we've maintained that. The first petition warrant article is from Brian Provincial uh, and 25 registered voters or more uh, dealing with the amending the entertainment uh, ordinance uh, dealing with, I would say, noise. And a few other subjects in this particular article. I believe you all have a copy of the, uh, the warrant articles that came with your packet tonight. Um, if you want me to read this or not. That would be great. Okay. Upon the petition of Brian Provincial, at least 25 registered voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 149 of the Code of the Town of Hampton Entertainment Activities as follows. One, 149-2 purpose. Add, the long-standing commercial nature of the business seasonal BS and the business seasonal one BS1 zones 
are also included and shall likely continue to include providing for entertainment activity to many visitors who annually come to Hampton Beach. These beach businesses are the economic engine for the town and the requirement for the annual enact entertainment license for these zones is an unnecessary burden on these operators. The entertainment activity in these zones can be effectively and efficiently regulated by the hours of operation and the sound levels set forth in this ordinance and by the Hampton Police Department when necessary. Number two, uh, section 149-5, license required, add. However, no license hereunder shall be required for operators engaged in entertainment activities within the business seasonal BS and the business seasonal one BS1 di zoning districts. Section 149-9, hours restricted, add. By using, operating, or permitting of an entertainment activity, either inside or outside in the BS and BS1 zones, shall not be allowed between the hours of 1 a.m. and 12 noon on any day of the week. Section 4, 149-13-A, complaints, additional restrictions and conditions. This section shall not apply to entertainment activity in the BS and BS1 zones. Section number five, number section 149-15, noise standards applied. Noise A, noise levels, add. For entertainment activity in the BS and BS1 zones, it shall be unlawful for an operator to emit or cause to be emitted any noise beyond the boundaries of his or her property in excess of 80 decibels dB measured in the A scale between 12 noon and 12 midnight and in excess of 60 decibels dBs between 12 midnight and 1 a.m. For determining the noise levels for entertainment activity in the BS and BS1 zones, the point at which the sound readings will be taken and recorded shall be at those points which are locally, which are located 50 feet from the operator's property lines. Section number six, section 149-16, police attendance. This section is intended to and shall hereafter be applicable to both licensed operators of entertainment activity and to operators of entertainment activity within the BS and BS1 zones. Number seven, section 149-19, violations and penalties. This section is intended to and shall hereafter be applicable to both licensed operators in entertainment activity and to operators of entertainment activity within the BS and BS1 zones. That's the article. Can't locate them fast. Yeah. <laughs> we just lost Phil. Uh, actually, the board, uh, we, unless it's a... Um, you can vote tomorrow night on these if you want. It, you, the board in past has sometimes voted to recommend or not give a recommendation on non-money articles. Wow. It isn't a requirement, but it's... So far, they've given a recommendation on all non-money articles this year, so... Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you. All right, let's... Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, do you want to... I think we already have one that we've we've had the police chief come in. Yep. Police chief made his recommendations, and I think we had a, a unanimous vote on that, if I'm not mistaken. You did. Or was it four one abstention? And one abstention, wasn't it? Yeah, I've, I've abstained from this from the get go, and I've, right. I would abstain from anything tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, um, I would recommend we we hold off till tomorrow night on this when we have another board member here, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, we're only gonna have three tomorrow night. So yeah. might as well might as well do it now. Yeah. I'll make a motion not to recommend. I'll second it. Only because I think we already have one that the police yep. chief has worked very hard on, and he's the one that's gonna have to yep. enforce it. I'll second it. All in favor? Abstention. Two to one. Zero two one. Okay. Okay. The next article is also uh, amend the entertainment ordinance uh, submitted by the same petitioners. Upon petition of Brian Provincial, at least 25 registered voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 149 of the Code of the Town of Hampton Entertainment Activities as follows. In the event that you agree that there must be changes to the regulations of entertainment activities of each, but cannot agree on the entire foregoing warrant article number ZUB, number, uh, number one, 149.9 hours restricted, add, 
the using, operating, or permitting of an entertainment activity, either inside or outside in the BS and BS1 zone, shall not be allowed between the hours of 1 a.m. and 12 noon on any day of the week. Number two, one four, one, section 149 dash 15, noise standards applied. Uh, noise A, noise levels add. For entertainment activity in the BS or the BS1 zones, it shall be unlawful for an operator to emit or cause to be emitted any noise beyond the boundaries of his or her property in excess of 80 decibels dB measured on the A scale between 12 noon and 12 midnight and in excess of 60 decibels dB between 12 midnight and 1 a.m. For determining the noise levels for entertainment activity in the BS and BS1 zones, the point at which the sound reading shall be taken and recorded shall be at those points which are located 50 feet from the operator's property lines. And a warrant article. Okay. Uh, Same as the previous one, I'll vote not to recommend. Make a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Abstention? Zero, two, one. Okay. Uh, the next article is the Christmas Parade. On the petition of John Nine and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate $3,000 to pay to Experience Hampton Incorporated, the organizer of the 2010 through 2017 Hampton Christmas Parades, to help defray the expenses of the 2018 parade and related activities. Majority vote required. I'll make a motion that we uh, support this. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Next article, uh, petition of uh, Kim, is it Roden, and 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of providing additional funding needed to complete the reconstruction and associated activities of the Grist Mill Dam also known as the Mill Pond Dam, and to amend the, and amend the Town of Hampton Warrant Article Number 38 from 2015 by changing the required completion date to until the repair or rebuilding of the Grist Mill Dam is completed or to March 31, 2020, whichever is sooner, subject to the appropriation, the sum of $100,000 of this amount is to come from the Town's unassigned general fund balance, a fund containing un unexpended appropriations from prior years as of, de as of December 31, 2017, and no additional amount to be raised from taxation in this tax year. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March 31st, 2020, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, no tax impact. So moved. Second. And discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Next article is uh, Second Street Fire Lane. A petition of Norman I. Hurley and 20 <coughs> 25 or more registered voters shall the town vote to move the fire lane from the south side of Second Street to the north side of Second Street. Background. There, there are a maximum of three on-street on parking spaces on the north side of 2nd Street. The property owners on the north side of 2nd Street have adequate off-street parking. There is a maximum of seven on-street on parking places on the south side of 2nd Street. The property owners on the south side of 2nd Street do not have adequate parking. The planning board approved a subdivision on the south side of 2nd Street to allow two condominiums in one single family dwelling and allowed parking for that in what, is, in what is now the fire lane. This will resolve a public safety a public safety issue when the residents of the condominium park in the fire lane and the vehicles also parked on the north side of the street. I'd like to add to that that only the selectmen can amend that by statute. Uh, and you can amend that right now, but you can't remove the petition warrant article. Okay. Um, this would then be advisory. Well, because the statute only provides under 41.9 and 47.17, Romans 7 and 8, that only the, the governing body can, can regulate traffic control. And has, has the fire chief commented on this at all? No, he hasn't commented on it. 
We just we just received it this okay. afternoon. Rusty, you can do this tonight if you want. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it unless I hear from him. I, I, no, I understand. I'm sitting here from the fire chief. Yeah. <clears throat> I do know Second Street as we own property at the end of it for many years, uh, and and most of the parking is the the parking usable parking is on the south side. So um, I, I can see what he's trying to do, but I'd like to hear from the fire chief first. Okay, and we can do it later if we. If we oh, you can, yeah. Yeah. So. We'll just so I would suggest we forward. we remain Tomorrow silent. Night. It goes yeah. on and. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Right. Okay. Next article is uh, town vote on non-union raises and benefits. A petition of Sun Sunny Kravitz and at least 25 Hampton registered voters. We request that a warrant be placed in the 2018 town meeting of Hampton for the following: Shall the voters ha of Hampton vote on all new on all non-union wage and/or benefit increases that exceed the annual Social Security cost of living adjustment? I would move that we remain silent on this. Rusty, a little bit more. I got no problem with that. No problem. Okay. Uh, the next article is Mace Road sidewalk. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $520,000 for the construction of a, an Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, compliant six-foot sidewalk on the west side of Mace Road, including installation of ADA-compliant ramps to crosswalks connecting Mill Road to High Street? So moved. Rusty? I'll second it. Okay. Oh. Discussion? Rusty? I in, I, I, I can sympathize with these ladies. I also understand that we have a lot of projects going on in this town. Uh, so I just soon leave it up to the voters to decide that. Um, good luck. Thank you. But, um, so. Yeah, I, th I think it's a life safety issue. There was, uh, prior to the, the um, uh, high street sidewalk, there was a fatality. When, and there was a young girl that lost her life. And I think it's small potatoes. And I, again, I think it's a life safety issue. Uh, the young women uh, have spoke elo spoken eloquently about it, and I think the board should enthusiastically support it. Thank you. Okay. I'm a proponent of sidewalks. And I know that I've been in the minority on other <coughs> things on this on sidewalks, but I'm a proponent of sidewalks. Uh, they cost a lot of money, and uh, uh, but you got a lot of kids walking to school. You got a lot of kids doing things. So I'm a proponent of sidewalks. So uh, I would I would make a motion to. Uh, Recommend this. I second that. All in favor? Unanimous. Three okay. all. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. The next article is cemetery tree removal. On the petition of Mary Ray Preston, at least 25 registered voters shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of fifty thousand dollars to remove remove and or trim dead or dying trees in the towns in Hampton cemeteries for health, safety, and aesthetic reasons. Didn't, didn't we approve did this, this a few years, years ago? We did, but the money came from a cemetery fund. This is coming from general taxation. But it got approved three years ago. It did, but they didn't do the work. They canceled it. I would move that we remain silent. Um, Rusty? You know, like I said, I'd, I'd like to see. <laughs> I, I think we can remain silent on this one. Okay, I will too. Yep. Uh, the next one which is really a, uh, a petition for opinion. Uh, by petition of the following registered voters of Hampton to be placed in the 2018 town warrant, shall the town express its support for Governor, to Governor Sununu for New Hampshire <coughs> to join Massachusetts and Maine and study the feasibility of developing offshore wind power in the Gulf of Maine. The town will provide written notice urging uh, Governor Sununu requests the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management to form an intergovernmental task force. A bipartisan New Hampshire <coughs> legislative committee uh, studied the potential for offshore wind in 2014 and recommended the establishment of this task force. Floating wind turbines located offshore in the federal waters and are barely seen from land combined with other renewable energy will move New Hampshire to, and I think this is an incorrect statement, <coughs> mis mistype, it says 1,000% of renewable energy by 2050. 
the building of offshore wind farms uh, will bring a significant number of jobs and revenue to New Hampshire. I think that that's a hundred percent should be, not a thousand percent. Uh, I'm going to just speak. Uh, uh, needs more study for my. Need, needs a lot more study. Uh, yeah, I would agree, Mr. Chairman. It's outside our wheelhouse. I would, I would urge that we oh, remain yeah. silent. Yeah. Yep. Very good. As noble as the the uh, initiative is. That is it for warrant articles, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, was the first one uh, on the top of the first page voted on at a prior meeting? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, you're right. It was not. Um, upon the petition of at least 25 legal voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, to see if the town will vote to modify all fence height restrictions and deeds for former town leased lots to allow fences to be a maximum of four foot high, matching the height for trash and recycling bins distributed by the town and required for, tra for town collection, majority vote required. I guess, I guess I my comment would be yeah, that go ahead. Well, go ahead. My comment would be that the, the, the current law requires fences around pools to be four feet high, and that would be illegal in these zones under the current uh, deed restrictions. That's what I, I was saying, the same thing with the pools. You know, yeah. They're required to have at least four feet. Right. By state law. Uh, the, uh, the approach of, uh, I, un I understand the frustration with the enforcement of deed restrictions, and until this last year, the only means by which to get a deed restriction modified was to go to town meeting. We now have, as we've seen, the RSA 4114A process right. with the town meeting authorized, whereby on a case-by-case -case basis, these can be evaluated under their individual circumstances to see what modification is warranted. Um, to take a blanket vote to modify all of these deed restrictions uh, in my view, might create a, a title nightmare uh, for people. Uh, when this board votes to modify a deed restriction, we record a modification that applies to that specific parcel. Um, of the 600 plus parcels that were part of the lease land program, I'm not sure how many would be affected by this, but uh, I, I can't see us going and, and making a modification to 600 parcels. Jeez. I would move that uh, we not support this. Second. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Zero three. That's it, sir. Very good. Thank, Thank you very Mark. much. I see uh, our finance director here. She wants to speak with us, I'm sure. She wants to bring you lots of money. I think she, I think she was the winner up in. Oh, she uh, was the winner? Yeah, I think so. Winner of what? The lottery. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> I would hope you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a winner. Um, basically, it was very late this afternoon, so I apologize for that. But I have yes, supplied all of you with a yes, memo and a request to adjust the default budget amount. Uh, the budget committee is having their final review of the budget tomorrow, and then we have the public hearing on Thursday night. The default budget is set by the Board of Selectmen. When I was in here doing our budget review, we set the default budget at that time. However, things have transpired since then, which allow us to decrease the amount of the default budget, which is a good thing. And so I've provided a memo showing you all of the areas that are being decreased. It's a total of a total reduction of $283,859. So it's significant. Um, when you're looking at the tax impact of it. So we felt that it was important to bring this back to you guys and propose that we vote on a new default budget amount of $26,842,312. You can see on your memo that I've listed out where all of the deductions are. Some of them are related to gasoline and diesel because we've been monitoring that for the whole year and tracking where we're at. So we have those numbers set now that we are through December. The other big ones were we received, <coughs> since you guys met the liability and general insurance and workers' compensation insurance, actual rates for 2018. So it's about $89,000 of re uh, reductions there. And then waste hauling, the um, public works director brought a mathematical error in regards to his number of tons that he had put into the budget. So that's a 
reduction of 51,663. And then the, the last two big ones are related to uh, debt principal and debt interest. When we set the default budget, we weren't sure at that time when we were gonna be getting the bond for Lafayette Road, the 1.1 million, and we now have that. It's, well, we're, we will have it within the next couple of weeks. And we know now that we will not have a principal payment in 2018 since we're bonding it this year. So that's a reduction of 110,000. And then there was some debt interest uh, in regards to the Church Street pump station. The SRF funding for that has been, I don't know how many times, Fred, at least six times probably we've at gotten. Least. <laughs> so that ended up being a reduction in debt interest of 22,453. So that kind of like, those are the heavy hitters of the 283,000, just to point out to you guys. So. <clears throat> If you would like to vote on the $26,842,312, we can move that forward. Um, I'll make the motion that we amend the um, default budget to the figure just stated. 26842312, second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Amended. Okay. And I'd like to compliment you on, on staying right on top of the budget all year long excellent reports every month and staying right on top of this whole budget process it makes it very easy for the board of selectmen and everything when you come in and just tell us boom 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 uh, excellent I, job i think if you watch the the budget committee meetings i think they've been pretty smooth this year i think uh and that goes part to your help with them understanding stuff so i really appreciate that thank you thank you director thank All you right. And not under old business, I don't know what it's under, but I had a, Christina gave me something to announce tonight and I kept forgetting to do it. <laughs> there will be an opening for a supervisor of the checklist coming on the March election as Barbara Renault's term is up and she's not planning to continue. We would like the selectmen to mention this at the next meeting to advise any person who might be interested as the sign-up period is this month. It's a six-year term. Right. So it's an elected it is. So anybody interested in an opening for the supervisor of the checklist coming up this March election? And when do you, do you have the dates for the? the I, I don't. Don't. It's, 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 the, it's the end of the month. End of the month. I think it's the last week and a half of the month. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. We got that out of the way. Uh, oh, new business. We already did the petition to warn articles. Closing. Co oh, we're going to go. Uh, yes. Uh, could Mr. Chairman, could the board uh, make a motion to? Go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small C reputation and small E uh, consideration or negotiation of pending claims for litigation. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, roll call. Rusty. Aye. Bill. Myself. Aye. Uh, thank you, Tony. And we might be coming back for public vote. So 22, hang around, please. Does the board wish to I'll make uh, a motion that we seal the minutes? Do we do that in public, though? Don't we? Yes, we are in public. We're in public. No, we're in public now. Okay. That's right. We are in public. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we seal the minutes of the private meeting. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. I'll make a motion to adjourn. At uh, 8:57. All in favor? Right. Sorry, Max. Things change. Things change. Things change.